And so we're talking in relation today to the Stephen Bear case, the case of the, well, self-labelled, I suppose, reality star who was found uh, guilty of voyeurism and other charges earlier this year. Yeah. Yeah. To give a bit of context as well. So Bear, he actually won Celebrity Big Brother in, back in 2016. Um, and he recorded him and his girlfriend at the time, Georgia Harrison, having sex in his back garden. And he recorded her, or the two of them, on CCTV. It was about an hour after they'd begun having sex that he showed her um, a clip of them taking part in that act. She was horrified to know that A, he had been recording it and B, that he hadn't told her until that point. And she said to him quite clearly, if you show that to anybody else, I will be extremely upset and you will be in trouble. And what Stephen Bear went on to do after recording this footage of the two of them, which Georgia had expressly told him not to, was to share it on his OnlyFans site among other platforms. So that's when the crime that he committed went from simply voyeurism to so-called revenge porn. Am I right in saying that revenge porn isn't actually a law in and of itself? It's kind of the the colloquial term. It's a colloquial term, a tag term for, you know, the possibility of a series of different offences being committed. And the case also highlights um, an issue that runs through many of these cases about which is consent because we we all think we know what consent is but when you actually get into the nitty-gritty of these cases um, you can find that there has been perhaps little thought maybe no thought at all as to who is consenting to what mm. and yes we we live in the real world and you know, relationships aren't built around, you know, contracts and and so on. You know, we're all human beings and, put it simply, stuff happens. And fine, but these cases do highlight um, an education problem in that people are not thinking about the consequences of what they're doing and particularly in the world that we're living in now, where people are leading their lives in many ways on social media, through their iPhones. Mm. You know, the iPhone is almost part of the, the anatomy now. And I don't think we objectively think about that. And we, I don't think we objectively think about the implications. I'm just thinking about what you said there about the 21st century. This is a, we're dealing with a lot of new technology and an influx of new ways to, to legislate things. But an amazing thing that Georgia said um, after Bear was found guilty, she said that social media has given us the egalitarian belief that we are all publishers, but what it hasn't done is regulate what we should responsibly publish. Now, where does the book lie? If somebody uh, publishes on a public platform a nude image that wasn't uh, obtained via consent and was used to cause distress, how, obviously the book lies with them for doing it in the first place, how responsible are social media platforms who allow that kind of content to be published? Well, there's very powerful arguments to say they should be responsible. They, you know, it's their... Their platforms, they're the ones who are running the platforms, they're the ones making, presumably, profit out of running these platforms. So therefore, there's a very powerful argument to say, yeah, um, they should take a a responsibility. But we have to be honest um, and appreciate that we're living in a real world and these things are very difficult to police and it's all very well for me, say, sitting in my chair to say, oh, you've got to police it. It's your job and all the rest of it. I think as a society, Mm. society has to accept a certain responsibility because we send out mixed messages to... How do you mean? ...to children and young people. Mm. Um, I can remember uh, um, a couple of years ago, um, 
switching on the TV one evening, um, flicking through the channels as you do, or well, that's what I was doing, and just hit upon, it was a mainstream US program, can't even remember what it was called, but it was mainstream, um, and um, it portrayed um, sort of youngsters um, moving from sixth form into university. It's sort of that sort of age, 18, 19 year olds, all living in, you know, very nice circumstances, lovely homes, green lawns and the white fence, <laughs> fences and all the rest of it, all very middle class and respectable and so on. And all the kids looked, you know, healthy and wonderful and all the rest of it. Um, and um, they showed um, a lad sending what is described these days as a dick pic mm -hmm. to a fellow student. And she picks it up on her telephone, the, the picture, jumps on her bicycle, and Julie cycles over to the lad who's sent her the, um, um, the picture. Um, and, you, you, know, it's, you know, it's obvious what it's all about. Um, but that's mainstream TV. And, I, and it struck me, I thought, well... If you're a 15 or 16 year old and you're watching this, you'd think that's, oh yeah, that's the, that's the way to get a boyfriend, girlfriend, or, you know, or, you know, this is what you do. So she cycled over to his house yes. to yes. take it because yeah. it was a good thing. I thought uh, you were going to say she went over and beat him up. No, oh. no, no. He sent her the picture saying, hey, hey. Um, right. And, um, and uh, she jumps on her bike and Julie um, comes over and goes into his bedroom and, you know, as, and, four, and two and two makes four. Um, and, but the point I'm making is, is that, um, yeah, okay, trashy TV maybe, but the, the fact is that it occurred to me, well, this is mainstream TV and someone, you know, that's being watched um, by a particular audience and we're saying, sending this message to these kids, mm. to that audience, that this is what you do, this is normal. Yeah. I don't know how familiar you are with the Andrew Tate story mm -hmm. that's out at yep. the moment. So we're talking about, you know, young men not knowing right from wrong and there's this clash of, well, you shouldn't be doing this, but social media is telling you or just implying that this is okay. What about the men out there, such as Tate, who are literally educating young men and older men too to, and telling them that this is a, not just something to do as a hobby, but a business model that the exploitation of women or sexual exploitation of anybody can be turned into capital. Well, we've seen this in recent years with the um, um, exploitation cases in some of the Northern towns and, yeah. um, Again, it's an uncomfortable truth that we we rather not hear about uh, trafficking and exploitation of vulnerable children and young people, and in some cases not so vulnerable. Um, um, is there? It's, it's happening in our midst. Um, we don't like to think about it because it's so horrible, but that is one of the realities that we're having to contend with. Um, and I see the cases when it's far too late. Something terrible has happened. Um, so yes, you have got um, in society this 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 conflict. You know the law is clear. You don't sexually abuse children. You don't sexually abuse anybody. The law is very clear. But culturally, um, you've got issues. As I said, you know one of the prime ones that we see so often is about the lack of understanding when it comes to consent. Response of. Stephen Bear, this kind of self-proclaimed, you know, playboy who turned up to court in a Rolls Royce that he rented and a big fur coat. And he actually advertised his adult entertainment site mm. uh, on the day, well, on the days uh, mm. during his trial. He said, oh, do, do you want to know why I'm trending? Come and check this website out. He was promoting himself. And even if it's for this brief period in time, I know that society as a whole will look at her and think, well, she's 
she is the hero. She always has been, would have been for me. But I worry with the rise of um, the Andrew Tates of the world, men who are capitalising on the entertainment industry, that there is still a corner of the internet, very impressionable young boys and lost older men who will soon see Stephen Bear as actually having played the system in this case because, hey, he might be facing a jail sentence, but the amount of money that he's made out of this exposure is huge. And, and that's, what, that's what concerns me. That's the dark side of these And things. I think you're right to raise your, your concerns, and that just serves, I think, my point, which is there is a huge, huge need for um, accountability and education. And regulation. Yeah, which comes in with it's all account- part of it. yeah comes in with accountability. Um, so in Parliament at the moment, there's this victims' bill, which is designed to give um, victims of, of crime um, greater purchase in the justice system. Great um, as far as it goes. There's a victims' code, um, which is there to help um, victims to access um, what they need and to have a greater say in their cases and so on, all, all good. So it's a step in the right direction. But there's an, also an opportunity there, I think, for the politicians and particular um, government to think, well, actually, um, we need to go a lot further. Mm. Um, um, there needs to be a lot more responsibility um, in society, um, particularly at institutional level, for when terrible things happen. So we've had, you know, cases of police officers um, um, sexually exploiting uh, and, and so on, you know, quite high profile cases, tragic cases, awful. You just couldn't make the stuff up, could you? Mm. Um, um, but these cases serve, in my opinion, um, serve, in my opinion, my point, which is it's very difficult when things go wrong for victims, survivors and their families to get accountability. Semi-trick question for you. Semi-trick thought, question. Semi, yeah, it's a, well, let's call it a trick question. <laughs> so I was thinking about this a while ago because I got sent an unsolicited dick pic. Right. And the way that I used to deal with things like this was if somebody sent me a photograph like that, I would then share it as a way of going, well, if you're going to send this image to me, I'm going to post it. I would put an emoji over it right. so as not to offend, you know, if there are any children watching my Instagram feed. But it was my way of claiming my power as if someone's going to uh, sexually harass me mm. in my inbox, somebody that they've never met before, mm. then I would take that image and post it to say, well, I'm going to make it public. If you want to make, if you're trying to do this to me in private, then I thought, am I then in breach? Well, it's dangerous territory, isn't yes. it? I would say to you, don't. Okay, yes, good. That's the advice that I give. I say no matter how tempting, yeah. you just destroy the thing. You don't want it on your phone or any of your devices. You just, whatever way you can delete the thing, destroy it. Yeah. Because the risk is it goes somewhere and you get into trouble because, I don't know. Unless maybe, you're sharing it with your solicitor or the police, I suppose. Uh, yeah, the police is all right. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, supposing... The person who sent the dick pic was underage. Yeah. Yeah. Absolute right. minefield. You, know, you don't know, do you? So you're just opening yourself up to potential um, trouble yourself. So my advice is, heaven forbid, if someone sends you something like that, um, you, you destroy it, you delete it. And if you're concerned that actually there may be a vulnerable person or child involved... I think you you should report it to the police. Yeah, report it immediately. Mm. Well, I, yeah, that's a a really good piece of advice, actually, because a lot of women do do that. Mm. Um, And I'm, I would absolutely be in support of them initially until I started thinking about it. I would not um, send it on to anybody, no matter how safe or tempting you think it might be. Mm. I think if you thought this was a, a vulnerable person or a child was involved or they're underage... I'd say to the police, look, I've received this from whatever. What do you want me to do? Take it to them immediately. Mm. Yeah. So another thing I wanted to talk to you about was, which I didn't know about until I was doing a bit of research before meeting you today. Um, In the eyes of the law, I don't know if it's happened yet, 
or if it's going to be added to the online safety bill. An image of a, a pornographic image of a person that is a genuine photograph yeah. is seen as equal to a photograph that's been uh, created. So somebody's face yeah. has been put on a nude body. Is that correct? You've got, the law has got to change to capture this because it can happen to varying degrees. Um, and of course, um, understandably, lots of people who get caught up in this um, are extremely distressed because it's either, you know, it's either their image or part of their image or That's whatever. That's, it's horrible. And again, it can have profound consequences for them. Um, in civil law, the perpetrator um, could be liable in civil law for the harm that he or maybe she has gone and caused. Mm -hmm. um, but whether a criminal offence um, has been committed or not is going to depend on the circumstances, which is why this online safety bill needs to be enacted to capture all of this kind of behaviour. Okay. Otherwise, because at the moment there's there's gaps, um, and that's the problem. Um, and so um, the law needs to be clear, um, but somehow or other it's got to try and capture all these different scenarios. And the challenge is um, because social media and so on is evolving so quickly, yeah. it's, it's always a question of, you know, the law trying to keep up. Um, and that's going to, you know, so this law, if it comes about, um, might be good for so many years, but may have to be updated because there may be scenarios that we have yet to come across. Mm. It's like with the prevalence of deep fake and artificial mm. intelligence, like it's, somebody you know, could create an image for of anybody doing anything. That's right. You know, and it's a, it's a world that the vast majority of us don't understand. You know, it's a, a part of the world that we're never going to go to, but we have to know about it in order to protect people. Mm.